People who used to develop photos for complete strangers as a job. What was the weirdest photo you developed? My best friend worked in the photo lab of a supermarket we both worked at during high school. A police officer mixed up two rolls of film he had. One being his family vacation photos and the other being photos from work. Gunshot suicide victim. That messed her up a bit. She also saw a lot of child pornography. The police were called often. When I was really young my sister and I took naked pictures of ourselves for the lols on a disposable camera. The my unknowing dad went to the supermarket to get the pictures developed for us. Looking back I'm surprised he wasn't arrested. I think people forget that whoever is developing them will see the pictures. I had some of a woman taking them with less and less clothes on. Obviously to give to someone. Also a man stuck naked lying starfish on a bed. There were also some abused cows which the lady who brought that camera in pre-warned us about. They were going to be used as evidence I believe. They were going to be used as evidence I believe. I used to work at a copy place before color copiers were ubiquitous and we used to have lawyers come in to copy evidence photos. I've seen men at Ed Bodes but the worst was a 7 year old boy who had his throat slit by his father. I currently work in a photo lab at a regional superstore, rivaling Walmart. I get a lot of weird stuff and people, but the one that sticks out is this old couple who visit once a month or so. They like to print out pictures of cheerleaders and ring girls that they take off the TV. They sit there with their crappy $30 smartphone camera taking pictures of any hot girl on the TV. Then complain when it prints out in crappy quality and never end up buying them. Last time he was when he tried covering for himself by saying he was at the venue. And the manager said to have at it with the girls. Take as many pictures as you like but again. It's still very clearly the TV. It's a weird process my co-workers and I go through. Imagine how blown their minds will be if they ever learn about the internet. I developed church directory photos. Sue so men old guys standing behind their wives holding their wife's boobs. Not even kidding. Not me, but my buddy worked as a photo tech the summer before we left for college. He said about once every two weeks this guy would come in and get photos developed of Taco Bell products. Like, really nicely arranged on his dining room table. The trolley man. Once a week a middle aged man would come in to have the photos on his SD card digitally printed. It was always photos of out of commission train cars. Anywhere in the neighborhood of 500-1000. Photos each week of different trolleys. Figured it was a hobby of his that he enjoyed. But to drop $50 weekly on photos of trains stuck me as odd. To each their own though. I worked in a one hour photo lab in an Eckerd in the early zeros. We went through every picture that was dropped off and color corrected them so I saw everything. One of my favorites was a picture of this larger woman in a mauve, velour mini dress posing on her hands and knees atop an evac unit behind her ratty looking duplex. It was so weird. Of all of the strange places to take steamy photos, that would not be the first choice. I saw lots of other bizarre and random things in my two years there. Naked people. Bizarre houses. Dead people. The inside of chicken processing plants, which when taken with disposable cameras looked like something out of horror movies. There were lots of people who were regulars and so I basically had a rather voyeuristic view into the best moments of their life. It was an interesting job. When the hack comes on and blows air out, that's when the fun begins. Weird is all about perspective. I managed a supermarket mini lab 20 years ago when 35mm was still king. I loved it. One that stands out was a series from an art student. There was a 1950s subversive series of quiet desperation. She did black and whites, dressed in a vintage housewife outfit, complete with the hairstyle, and had her head in the oven to mimic suicide. There was another with the perfect housewife suicide by toaster in the bathtub image. She did a Betty Page series, too. Damn it now I wanna see the pictures. Sounds artsy and cool as frick. Slightly different perspective, but a few years ago one my college roommates found two disposable cameras that had never been developed. We finally had the pictures made up about 15 years after they were taken. Apart from a lot of group shots and alcohol, there was this one particular photo of a man and woman eating cereal at our dinner table completely naked. None of us have any idea who they were. This was in the mid late 90s. We were a small independent one hour photo lab right smack in the middle of town. 
lots of stories. The three that stick out the most. If you've ever seen the movie Parenthood with Steve Martin and Rick Moranis, there's a scene where a teen daughter had her dirty love making pictures developed at the same photo booth as her mom's family reunion pictures. The photo tech searched for the last name, and he gave the mom the daughter's pictures and the daughter mom's pictures. This exact same thing happened with me. I gave the mom the pictures and her eyes shot out. Oops. There was a P website guy who lived in our town and he used our lab to develop all of his pictures. He was really into women P. It's the first time I learned that if women use their fingers the right way, they can arch P a long distance much like a man can. We processed all of the pictures for the local hospital's pediatric mortality lab. I saw way too many grossly deformed dead babies. Those pictures represented so many broken hearts. It was an interesting experience for sure. I used to work in a photo developing company in high school and college. I've seen dead people. Funeral. A dead baby by a railroad track. Maybe it was for a police department. And nude photos. I think my dad was accidentally the weirdest customer for an unsuspecting photo developer about 20 years ago. He found an old camera in our house that hadn't been touched in years. He couldn't remember what photos were on it but assumed they were wholesome pictures of birthday parties, holidays, etc. He went to get the pictures developed on his lunch break at work the next day. Turns out my sister and I, who were about 5 and 3 at the time, thought it would be hilarious to take pictures of our bums on the camera, which my dad had absolutely no idea about. He said the guy developing the pictures seemed to be in his late teens early 20s and gave him an extremely disgusted look and slammed the pictures down on the table. My dad had no idea what he had done to pee this guy off, because he had been perfectly friendly just a few minutes beforehand. He didn't realize why the guy was angry until he got home and looked through the pictures to find grainy image after grainy image of a children's bare bums. Last summer I scanned a box full of my grandparents old negatives. There was a whole roll of my grandma posing naked in the woods and by a lake. I remember every time I hear from my grandparents shudders. Maybe that's why people get strangers to deal with their pictures. Oh geez. LOL. I feel your pain but also. Good for grams. I envy women who are okay enough with who they are and how they're made to be free enough to do things like that. My mom worked in a photo lab years ago and these are the worst things she saw. An infected dong piercing. The entire dong had swelled to the size of an eggplant and was beet red. She said it looked like it was going to pop. A nasty bachelorette party in which a girl shoved a lollipop up a lady parts and then a friend proceeded to suck on lick it. I don't actually develop photos myself, but my professor, who used to be a social worker, told me some stories of some that she came across. Note photo developers are to notify social workers if they come across anything weird or troubling. In one story she told us, she had picked up a batch of photos and gone to the house of the person these photos belonged to. At this point, she had not opened up the envelope to see what the photos contained. Upon arriving at the scene, she took a look and immediately threw up on sight. Now I was skeptical because I've never heard of someone throwing up from a photo, but then she finally told us what the images contained and it all made sense. A man had taken photos of his dog fricking his naked, 6 year old daughter. Note, she's no longer a social worker. A man had taken photos of his dog fricking. Well, that's pretty weird, but nothing horrifying. With his naked 6 year old daughter, burn this man a steak. I worked in a pharmacy's photo lab for a couple years in high school and college, roughly 2008 to 2011, shortly before most places stopped having a full out film development lab. I saw a lot of weird stuff, but the one that always stuck out on my mind was this one old man that would come in every week or two with a roll of film to develop. It was always photos of children playing in public places. Never the same kids, never from particularly close up, and they were never looking at the camera. This dude would just like post up on a bench in the park and take pictures of other people's kids. He was so duper weird and there was nothing we could really do about it. Pretty much the only thing we would have actually reported to the police was photos of an adult fricking a child. I feel like an anonymous tip to the police to at least start them sniffing around wouldn't have been out of order. Maybe he never did anything, but that's creepy enough to give them a heads up. Worked in a photo lab for almost 10 years, lots of weird ones. 
My favorite was a guy who dropped off a standard 24 all. The first 12 pictures were of an older car that he was restoring, in various angles and lighting. He had a portrait of Jesus that he kept moving so that it was in the bottom of each picture. The other 12 photos were him fricking his girlfriend in the car. The portrait of Jesus was not in those pictures. I walked at Walgreens for 5 years. Tons of pee. From anyone from thug gangster looking dudes to weird suburban housewives. None of you people up here. A dude had a picture of an Uzi and tons of money. I asked if we should call the cops but my manager said that he didn't break the law. We live in California. This is less entertaining than I thought. My bad. I used to work at a Maya photo kiosk and one day an older couple, probably late 60s, came in to print some pictures off of their digital camera. They used the self-serve computer to print so I didn't see the content of their order until it came through behind the counter where the printers are. When I grabbed the photos off of the printer tray to put them in the envelope I noticed the photos were all of the couple wearing pretty intense bondage gear in what appeared to be their basement or something. It was definitely the last thing I expected to see working there especially from an inconspicuous old couple. I used to work in a supermarket in the UK in a dry cleaners that had a photo development department. I once came across a photo of a larger lady who appeared to be passed out on a sofa and a masculine looking hand up her skirt having a fiddle with her lady garden. There wasn't just one photo either there was a collection of them. Needless to say we reported it, but I don't think any other action was taken. I think it's even stranger that there was a dry cleaners that had a photo department inside a supermarket. At my well known chain, I heard from one of the guys in electronics that one of the AMs had printed her nudes boudoir photos at work. She kicked everyone out of the lab so no one would see, but I guess someone caught a glimpse anyways. Ha, huh, if it was Walmart the computer would still have it in there for a few days. Not a developer but worked in pharmacy that had photo service. This hot guy came in every week with rolls of pictures for development. One day I could not stand any more suspense and peaked. They were core sample photos. Gets weirder. Five years later we moved to diff state. Guess who was our new next door neighbor? LOL. Geologists. Nice. I did photo development for a year inside a major national supermarket. Honestly, I didn't see that many weird things because in the UK you have to report cruelty, abuse etc. Most people are not stupid enough to implicate themselves although I know cases do exist. I did see lots of photos of attractive people though and the occasional hot steamy snaps of couples. Lots of random photos of pets not doing anything. The worst ones though were photos of cakes. Cakes? I mean, like, who the frick ever gets a photo album out and is like, oh the Victoria sponge we had Lisa's 22nd birthday, that was a good one. Cakes? Frick off. I know cakes are linked to emotional events, you know I know that. My point is, think of a wedding. Now think of all the family members lining up to take photos of the cake from the shittest angles and lighting ever imagined. If your relative documented their journey to master baker it is slightly different than 99 family members all with the same shite picture of a pineapple upside down cake on an Ikea plate and a disco. Probably the weirdest was the 50 plus swingers party there were so many people toys freaking going on it was an intense roll of film to develop. That or people who would do big stacks of digital photos and hide the nudes in the middle thinking we wouldn't find them. Also Valentine's Day was the worst guy's word of advice no lady wants to see your creative Valentine nude involving flowers hearts candy. I worked for three different labs. I did a lot of stuff for the FBI. The worst was a car accident involving a lifted truck versus jazzy scooter. They put the pieces of the victim into little Tupperware containers then documented each piece. They were the only pictures I have ever seen and felt physically ill. I had to have my boss finish them. We also had a lot of industrial accidents they usually involved someone falling off of high scaffolding or having a tool dropped on them accidentally. I have seen the remnants of people burned alive and beaten stabbed to death. I turned down the job offer to be a lead evidence photographer for them when I was done printing for them. I had evidence of a botched circumcision for a lawsuit against a pediatrician. And I had a guy that used to do boudoir albums. That was really bad at it. Like comically bad. He would come in every week with slightly better pics after 2 years they were just okay. 
The weirdest though, was a regular customer that brought in her young son's disposable cameras. The boys were 6-7 years old, one was filled with 35 pictures of his finger in front of the viewfinder, and another with the a bunch of random pictures of the sky, the family, a cat etc. The second roll also contained about 7-8 pictures of the boys comparing dongs. It was clear from the pictures that they were taken by the boys. I chatted with the mother who turned beet red and apologized profusely she had the negatives destroyed and I never printed the entire roll. I also had to photoshop a boy's dong off once. An elderly lady had taken care of her 4 year old grandson and let him play in the backyard pool she snapped a few pics of him to remember the occasion. A few weeks later he and his mother were killed in an accident. She had to make the funeral arrangements and the only pictures she had of the boy were of him playing in the pool in the nude. I helped her select a viable picture, enlarge the photo as much as possible and used some creative cropping as well as a digital pinectomy to make sure she could use the photo. I don't develop photos, but I work at a place that digitizes photos. Basically, people send in photos that were printed out and I run them through a scanner, touch it up, and then send them a flash drive with their photos on it. I've seen a lot of weird crap, but the thing that I always tell people about is this one of a lady getting a c-section. It was of a side view of the entire operation, so you could see the lady's upper body, a curtain so she couldn't see what was happening, and then her abdomen with all of the organs moved out so that could take her baby out. I was gross. But what made the picture bearable was that the lady was looking at the camera high on whatever the doctors gave her and sticking out her tongue and giving those metal horns. The ones where you stick out your index finger and pinky. It was pretty funny. You have to admit, making goofy faces at the camera and throwing up devil horns while your insides are spread across an operating table and a little person is cut out of your abdomen is pretty metal. I worked at a fot lab for 5 years and saw a lot. I got out right when digital was picking up and overtaking the 35mm market. Weirdest thing I saw was from a regular customer who would come in about every month and would always order single prints. The photos were always of feet in fancy high heel shoes. Think strappy 6 inches stiletto heels. I figured he had a fetish and nothing was overly pervy so I never said anything. One day he brought in a roll and a picture on it has stuck with me ever since I saw it. It was of a foot with a high heel on but the leg attached to the foot was sticking out of a rolled up comforter. It showed probably up to just about mid cuff and it wasn't in a standing position like all the others. Like sort of limply hanging. I have always wondered if he worked his way from fetish to something darker. 15 years ago I went to a party at a house of a guy who I just graduated high school with. His entire bedroom wall was plastered with pictures of girls we knew. Mostly bikini pics and stuff like that. I saw my ex's pic on the wall too. And asked how did you get this and he told me that he just made duplicates of every hot girl or naked pic he wanted. Frick that guy. An old man would have roll after roll of a woman posing like she was dead but in her underwear. The first time I saw his pictures I thought he killed her. He had her in different underwear all the time. Then she finally came in with him. Alive and well. He obviously had no idea we looked at all the pictures for color correction. Another weird one was an old lady who dropped off a roll of two little girls in lingerie posing provocatively and showing their privates. I called the police over that one. They gave me a list of questions to ask and hid around the corner to listen. I was only 17 years old myself. I have no idea what happened after she walked out the door with police. OMG the old lady story is so creepy and gross I hope she got in trouble and hopefully the abuse of the little girls stopped somehow. Worked in a photo lab for 15 plus years. I've seen a little bit of everything. A lab I worked for had an account with the crime lab so we got in tons of crime scene photos. One that stands out was a guy that got caught in a giant auger. Think of a huge drill mounted onto the back of a truck, used to drill holes for telephone poles. It looked like he was cleaning it off with a hose. The hose caught in the auger while it was spinning, pulled him into it. Pieces everywhere. Lots of amateur pee. You could tell that they were going to be nudies when the people stood around waiting for it. One memorable one was a woman going down on a guy. He took a selfie with his thumb up. Thought it was funny. We had a guy that would bring in rolls to be developed only. No prints made. Just develop the film and sleeve it. I was sitting around with a co-worker board and decided to look at them just for something to do. Ended up being pictures of young girls. 
79 yo, sitting on benches with their underwear showing, but like posed, called the police and I guess they found a bunch of underage pee at his house. The police thanked us and we checked everything after that. Had a guy come in all the time to get enlargements of crime scene photos. By the look of them, some were old and some seemed from different countries. I would talk to him all the time and he told me he was a consulting crime scene detective. Months later, I saw him on one of those real crime TV shows, not the hokey ones they have today, being interviewed about how he solved a serial murder for Interpol. Pretty cool. A local strip club would have a yearly golf outing for charity. Golfers would pay to have a stripper be their caddy for the day. Pictures of old guys getting BJs in golf cuts and strippers 69 eyeing on the green while guys were trying to putt. Good times. I find it weird that lots of people make prints of their selfies with snapchat filters on. Or the text bar across them are they going to put these in a photo album on their coffee tables? A weird one that sticks out was a woman printing off a family vacation album. Lots of happy pictures of her children in the site they saw. Her and her husband. Kids. Husband naked tied to her bed. Naked shots of her. And then it went back to pictures of her kids vacationing. Policy says we shred any indecent photos and had to try explain this when the lady came to pick them up with her young daughter. My grandma makes prints of snapchat filtered ones. I don't think she fully understands what snapchat is. She'll just see pictures on our phones that she thinks look cute and ask us to send them. And next time we go over there's a framed photo of my little sister with the dog filter. I used to work for Ritz camera back in the late 90s and early zeros. I've seen it all. Hunters prepping deer carcasses. Obscenity and nudity. Yup. Gay and straight. The one that sticks out was a woman taking her boyfriend's raw dog. And then in another photo sticking a sausage with a condom on in her pee. I worked in the DC area. And one of the locations I worked at was near the D. So I developed a lot of photos of M labs that blew up and the people who died as a result. Pics of dead people in a casket at their funeral was also popular. The most disturbing photos for me ever was a baby that was stillborn. It must have only been in utero for about 4 or 5 months. Its eyes hadn't even developed and its eyelids were sealed shut. The parents dressed it up in a onsie and beanie cap. When I realized what it was and saw they wanted 5x7 and 8x10 photos made I told my boss I wouldn't print it and went on a long smoke break while he did it. I feel for those parents, but I can't imagine wanting pics of my half formed baby to hang around the house. They were probably put into a remembrance album as a keepsake, and a way to deal with the grief. So sad, for your information, the hospital staff undoubtedly dressed the baby, not the parents. Who wouldn't have had clothing that could fit such a small baby. Saw all the normal stuff. Intentional nudes. Peephole stuff. Party scenes. Orca just fooling around. The strangest. Had a guy who come in with an entire roll of a woman's shoe. Like 36 pictures of one single woman's shoe. Staged. Backdrop. The works. It's called art. Proud papa and 20 something kid waiting for prints to come out of the printer. The printer paper would travel down a clear chute to be cut into individual prints. This was in the days of looking at color negatives so the image wasn't clear and the colors were opposite the prints. But I kept wondering why this guy took multiple pictures of a dark green blue V. As they started coming out of the wash I was chatting up the customers. Dad proudly said his son had come from the Philippines after being in the army. As the two watched the prints come out it was apparent the son had taken a whole roll of film of some girl HS bottom with her legs stretched out in the shape of a V. I quickly threw a shield over the shoot as we were in a public mall. I looked at the dad who was beaming with delight and pride in his son's prints. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. for now.